morning, TNT. It is Friday. I know I sent you something out on tweet yesterday, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. Maybe Ray can tell us. I don't know. But other than that, it was a good day. <laughs> I don't remember either. Let me see. I remember somebody telling me you did it. Um, oh. Iraq announces its exit from the list of high-risk countries. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We were looking for that. And, uh, you know, the thing about that, if you guys looked at the article, it said soon. But it said it was already announced, and it included the EU, who just a week, two weeks ago, said they'll think about it. And now, all of a sudden, it's done. They're celebrating. And it is, in fact, done, or they never would have made that kind of announcement. So. Okay. So it was a good day. Should have got you guys all excited. There's a bunch of stuff out today as well about the budget going through, 2020 budget, what it includes. And uh, one of the things that the 2020 budget will do, it says, is accomplish a bunch of the reforms. It's the budget with the white paper. It says the 2020 budget will include a bunch of the reforms. Because we've been running around wondering, is it 2020, is it 21, which one is it going to be? Well, it's been all over their news today. They're being transparent. They're telling the people that it is going to include a bunch of the reforms they're looking for. Now, they're telling them that because they also passed out a memo today telling security to get ready for the riots on the first. (laughs) They got memos out telling them how to prepare, what to prepare for, and what might be happening on the first with demonstrations and all of that. So they're getting ready for that too. Now why? I don't know. Because the budget doesn't come out in time, doesn't go through all the qualifications. We just don't know. But here's the best thing about the news today that they're letting the people know. The 2020 budget includes not only things from the white paper, but also uh, Resolution 315. Agreements for Resolution 315. So everybody's a little bit more excited today than they were yesterday. Resolution 315 is a law that addresses the reform of currency for revalue. They're saying it's now going to be included in the 2020 budget. So we can remove all guesses and all of that. We just need to see when it comes up. So there's a lot of good stuff going on over in Iraq. Over here, banks are still working, 611. They are working this weekend. They did have their meetings yesterday, day before. They are anticipating something happening over the weekend is what they're gearing up for. And if it doesn't, they still think it will be by the end of the month. So over the weekend or by the end of the month, it should occur is what they are being told. So, we want to get it done for a whole lot of reasons. Now, that's all the good stuff. And it weighs, outweighs everything else. But I would be remiss in not telling you guys that everybody's not on the same page. That Maliki and Amiri are trying to do whatever they can to stop this, to cause problems, everything in the government. That Sadar has come out with uh, Al Kazimi this morning in an article saying they should form committees to look at the bombing and the, the corruption and everything else. So while he went to Iran, 
and suppose the Iranian puppet to have at least that much in um, together with each other that they're willing to work on is strengthening the country. Even though he doesn't really want Al Qaeda's government, he does care about his country. So that's an important thing there. So, so here's what we got from um, from. Uh, our, our committee guys today. So, because I got to tell you guys, because you told me, and unfortunately, and I'll say that because I mean it, but unfortunately, it's probably not something you wanted to hear because I didn't want to hear it. But I do give you guys the information, good, bad, and the ugly. And the good, all that good stuff I gave you is really, really great. And I like it. So, Talking with our committee guy, though, he seems to think that um, the rates we are being given are out of the parameters of the treaty. So he doesn't uh, think that's going to happen. He's going to try and verify it, but I'm just giving you guys. It wasn't under the original treaty, and they're way out of the... Uh, parameters of the treaty. He's also being told there are concerns, there's been concerns with getting things done. Oh, let me check. Ray might not want me to be telling you guys this. Let me see. Who is this texting me? Oh, I should be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but I just let you guys know because there's different things going on. I think we got all the good news, but there's been concerns over the last six months, he said, and why they haven't gone forward with the uh, RV itself is uh, the changes that Al Qaeda making, of course. But some countries are having a concern with the U.S. They are totally on edge with... Uh, What's going on in the U.S., and is it about to implode? It is a real concern as far as letting the RV go is what he said this morning. And we could see that. A lot of people worry about not just the U.S. economy, but the, the U.S. dollar, what the worth of it is globally, especially if our country implodes. So he said they're very concerned about it. And just recently, when they realized it's a very real possibility that it could, in fact, happen. So he said, don't be surprised if they don't do it, even though they're gearing up to it, because the conversation is every day about the U.S., what's going on. So he said, don't be surprised if it waits until after the election, even though they wanted to do it before. Or here's a real key thing. What I thought was key. He said, unless they can see seven to ten days of straight harmony in the U.S., he said, then it will definitely go. But if not, it's iffy. And right now, it's at 90% of hold it off because what's going on, we don't know what's going to go on, and we really won't know until after the election. So that is a concern of other country leaders, and we know that. So far, they're feeling that the U.S. has isolated itself from the rest of the world, especially its allies. So that's a problem with most of them and the people that are involved in it. Now, we just got that information. As a matter of fact, is why we laid on the call, because we were just discussing it, that and telling us what's going on and what the real issues were and changes. So we'll see. That's what I'm going to tell you as far as that part goes. It is a concern with the rest of the world and the country. But all the good stuff we got going with Iraq pushing forward, Iraq making it transparent, telling their people this is exactly what's covered in the white papers, in the budget law, that most of your problems are going to be solved. And the part that they threw 351 in there, and that's what it covers, should 
really give them all confidence. But something has to happen by the first. But they know they're preparing for riots and demonstrations on the second. So they put both of them out there. Well, no, they didn't. Not with um, security, uh, military. They didn't put that out there that the memo went around. We got that separately, I think. All right. So let me see. Let me check out some of these texts first for a minute. Now we